What's up, everybody? My name's Mike. I'm Matt. And I'm Max. And this is the Step of Faith Podcast. Before we go any further, I just want to <laughs> let the audience know I'm wearing sunglasses mm. inside because my eyes got dilated today. Just so, so you know. Just so you know. Hence we we the want you to think, yeah, yeah. Not hiding from the paparazzi or anything or being that guy who wears sunglasses indoors. So. And as you see, we have the man, the myth, the legend here, Matthew Keating, the bloodline. <laughs> One of my best friends right here. Love Matt. And we just so happy to have him on. I'm so sorry I haven't had you on earlier. Matt was ripping me for that. She's like, oh, well, everyone else in the world has been on, so I might as well be on now. So <laughs> we're lucky to have Matt on. We were literally just sitting in the couch like, oh, want to come on the podcast? Matt was like, well, you had never asked me before, so <laughs> let's do it. So yeah, I, and Matt, we always have great conversations about faith. And um, so yeah, just happy to have you on and just start some awesome conversations. You ready, bro? Yeah. All right, okay, let's thanks do for it. having me on. You know, it took a while. But... <laughs> it took a while, but better, better late than never. I was better waiting. I was never. keeping the best for last. So that's what I Thank like to say. Thanks. That's a good way to good way to even. We're gonna have my little brother on soon. Yes, he's, uh, he's the little brother right syndrome he's, coming. He's sick. <laughs> so you know, keep him in your prayers. Hopefully, he feels better. We love you, Jesse. We love you, Jesse. We'll get you chicken alfredo. Yeah, chicken soon. alfredo. <laughs> I was about to say that. Uh, chicken and then we'll alfredo get you on the coming. podcast uh, after Matt makes his debut today. Maybe so. you can even eat chicken alfredo on the podcast. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty interesting. <laughs> That'd be interesting. But Matt, I like to say you are an endangered species. You are a high school Christian in Connecticut. You don't see many of them nowadays. It's a very it's a species that's becoming endangered. I would say. Yes. So, um, just speak about just your life as a Christian growing up. Um, your faith and how that's kind of transferred over to high school and just like your whole faith journey from the beginning to where you are now. Okay. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so um, I, I was like, I was born a, a Catholic and so was my brother. Uh, our, our parents brought us up in that religion. And mm. from like a young age, I went to like, um, like, like Catholic, like, like all the way from like preschool all the way up, like even through high school. Cause now I go to Holy Cross high school mm-hmm. and Honestly, like that helped my faith out a little bit, but I feel like it was more like the people around you mm-hmm. and things like that. I was always just, I was like went to church when I was young and I kind of stuck with it. And then the thing that brought me closer to the faith was like that, that drew me was probably like all the good friendships I made, like my brother, like seeing like how he grew mm-hmm. or like my other friend shout out to Rob, Rob. and like people like that. <laughs> and just... Learning the, seeing those connections and see how happy other people are yeah. when they're truly in their faith just helps you want to drive to be like, be like, oh, I see like how how good they're doing. Like maybe like I could have that type yeah. of thing and like try to just get that peace within yourself. And no matter how bad things are going, like mm. those people are always like they're always very happy. They don't let things super get to them because they know it's not in their hands. Yeah, and if, if you start worrying about it too much, it's not good. It's not like it's gonna. You could fix it yourself. Yeah, so yeah. it's not like <laughs> that's true. Absolutely, and just having that trust and having mm-hmm. that peace within yourself. And I got a little bit off the question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, this is good. And this then, is good. yeah, and then middle school, most of the same thing. Just going to church, all my all my friends. I'll I'll be honest. Being a high school is like it's like the weird change. Yeah. <laughs> so the beginning is hard, but once you, it's like it's like kind of that um that period in time where it's like hard, but if you keep like. You just have to keep pushing through and you through the get there eventually. Answer. And then over the past couple months, COVID, if I, this sounds weird, I think it's actually grew me a lot closer rather than further. Mm-hmm. Being having more time, like diving in like to the Bible and things like yeah. that. I remember one of my, like me and Rob, um, we, he was like, oh, do you want to do this cool thing? Because it was like December. And they were like, oh, do you want to read the first uh, 24 chapters of Luke I, yeah Luke I think it was mm-hmm. and then we just did that and then ever since then I like really started to try my best to put it through that's the awesome. front form of my life the best part I could and that's that's kind of it's kind of kind of up to this point yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's great awesome, man. that's awesome I know you talked about like how it got harder in high school so a question that I want to ask for you and I know Mike joked about it how <laughs> kind of an endangered species <laughs> yeah for real <laughs> being, uh, you know standing strong in your faith up here in uh, the northeast in high school so uh, my question for you is what do you think is the, the biggest obstacle mm. for, for high school students to like really get involved with their faith yeah it's just I, f- I feel like especially the beginning part of high school and it's like I feel like the how it changes like the beginning two years kind of set up like the rest of it in a way mm-hmm. that a lot of people say they're 
like Christian. Yeah. Or they really believe in high school, but there's a lot of lukewarm Christians. Yeah. yeah like very, very <laughs> lukewarm. Like, they're like, oh, I wear a cross. I'm a Christian, but that's um, it. They yeah. don't, yeah. they don't, they don't even follow any, like not even one word in the Bible. Yeah. They'll go out. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. then they'll like do something horrible and they'll be like, they don't even, even wonder about religion. The people that like, mm. like only when things are going bad, they'll look towards religion yeah. and cool. things like that. And going a little bit off that, I feel like it's just hard because it's like, in my opinion, the first uh, full dive into like secular society in a way. Mm -hmm. Like when you start to gain that knowledge and you're just like thrown into the deep end basically in high school. And even in a Catholic high school where you think religion would be more prominent, it's still not even close to like there. Like they try to put you in like religion classes and things like that. But yeah. I, I, if I had to be honest, I out of all the people in my whole school, there's like over 400 kids. I could probably name on my hands like the people that are like dedicated like, yeah. religious people. And obviously there's like a lot of people that say like, oh, I'm a religious. But then the people you see at church and Easter and Christmas and <laughs> that they never see the rest of the year and people like that. There's a lot of those people. <laughs> because like, like nothing against them, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just there's a lot of there's a lot of lukewarm yeah. people, if anything. Yeah. And I feel like that's the majority. And then just through high school, it's like a lot of things are happening and people mm -hmm. like so focused on other things they don't try to focus on things like faith and it's i feel like mm. that's probably the the most challenging part is just because everything's thrown at people mm. yeah that it just it's hard for them to mm -hmm. like balance back on faith because a lot of people didn't have that yeah mm -hmm. that foundation that i did when i was a kid and that's why i was very happy and yeah, yeah. i was brought up and things like that which helped me out a lot through high school and hopefully the rest of my life so no, that's yeah. awesome. No, I'm so proud of you just as a big brother. You're doing incredible things. And literally, I learn from you every day. And you have a lot of... You, no, yeah, it's for real. You have a lot of just great traits. And one of them is patience. You have literally the most insane patience out of anybody. We obviously, the guys that you know, my dad had a stroke. He had a lot of brain surgeries. So he says a lot of things out of the blue a lot of times, which really gets me pissed off. And I'm the first one to snap. But you just have... The most incredible patience out of anyone I've ever met. Could you just like, like talk about like how that came to be? You just like, were you always just like that patient or was that something that as you grew in your faith kind of graduated or graduated, grad, whatever I, I the word is. Gradually got better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> glory to glory. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and by the way, you too uh, strive me in my faith as well. So oh, it's, not just, oh, it's, not just, it. it's not just, it's not just, it's not just one side. It's not just one side. Yeah. So going into the whole patience thing is. Many of you know, my my dad suffered a tumor and, like, a whole bunch of brain surgeries and a lot of other things that, like, had him impaired and things like that. And I think I hear him coming about now. <laughs> um, <laughs> it it so, so, basically, what brought me towards my patients was partially faith, but also just how I was brought up in a way. Mm -hmm. That this all, that whole situation with my father happened when I was about, like, in fourth-ish grade. Mm -hmm. And... It was a whole, and I was like, I'll be honest, I was not always patient. I was <laughs> the opposite. I was a kid that like lashed out, yeah. like got like very angry at a lot of things. Obviously, I'm not not like too crazy, but like I definitely mm -hmm. wasn't even close to what I am now. Yeah. And what kind of drove me towards that is just kind of almost getting humbled by learning what's truly like important. Mm -hmm. Being like, I can't get mad over like the littlest things. Yeah. And, and also just throughout that time, whether it be seeing how like some of my other friends were struggling or how they're letting little things bother them. When I, when I see some of the things other th people are happening and they were just like mm. just dealing with them so much better yeah. and things like that. And there's a lot of other experience in middle school that has kind of had that whole, I kind of developed that mindset. I just like, I'm not going to let it bother me in a way. Like obviously like it's, it's horrible and all those things, but I'm just going to try to always put my best foot forward and try to make it as positive as I can, which definitely could be hard sometimes, yeah. but I try my best to just try to not to get too angry over things. And mm. now I came to the point where I could probably say that little to nothing bothers me, like in like a mean way, but obviously if someone says something like really nice or obviously like I would it'd like it'd be a good thing. But like if someone <laughs> like says something really mean to me, I, I've gotten better at just I mean, like whatever. Like, yeah. yeah, you're really good at that. No, that's awesome, so. man. Um, 
And I like what you're talking about, like those little things that bother us, and how quick they are to get under our skin and really push yeah. our buttons. Yeah. Um, I think <laughs> nobody does that better than family. And, um, was, yeah, yeah. Me and Matt know how to do it very good. <laughs> I was actually well. on um, an FCA call last night with my little brother, Jesse. Um, he said something that really spoke to me, and, and we yeah. were talking about faith, and I think it, uh, it really touches on some of the things you were saying, Matt, about not letting those little things bother you. And I think when we look at faith and what it really means, I think uh, with faith comes a lot of trust, um, because as you said, there's things outside of our control. Mm. And if we keep focusing on those small details, it's almost like we're taking God's job over. Like his job is to worry about those details. Mm. We're supposed to be in the present moment, control what we can control, and then yeah. surrender the rest in his hands. Mm. And obviously, that's much easier said than done. Yeah. But um, yeah. patience, you know, being a fruit of the spirit um, and God calling us into rest, uh, to have patience is really to have faith. Because yeah. we know, all right, where I am right that's now good. is where God wants me to be. And I'm mm. going to, you know, surrender and trust in the future and what he's going to do. But let mm. me bloom where my feet are planted right now. Mm. So uh, a question that I have for you is um, when your patience is tested, how are you able to, you know, incorporate your faith to help you stay in the moment if you do that at all? Oh, no, I definitely, faith is definitely the first things I try to bring up. Like if I somehow like, like if I'm just like in a bad mood or something, something brings up that I get mad at. Mm -hmm. I first come on like, what, like, what, what what's happening here like yeah. like why yeah. why, why? cuz i'm i'm usually the person that tries to keep it back and all those mm -hmm. little things i'm like why am i being mean to this person like why like wh why actually am i feeling these things mm. i try to bring it back to religion as you said and just hold oh sorry for my words but um, <laughs> just be like why like try to think of like religious aspect, but like try to be, be nice to others yeah. like mm. i'm always the person that one of my favorite coaches like um like to not judge others and things like that. Yeah. Like that whole teaching, I try to take the most to heart. Mm -hmm. Just being like, I don't try to judge others means I don't try to judge them again. Like to those are like I try my best to not mm -hmm. get into those positions and just try to just mm -hmm. stay patient and mm -hmm. awesome. just deal with everything I could deal with and put everything else up to God and yeah, it's kind of all I could do. So. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's a great answer and it, it definitely shows by the way you act. You know, some people are like, you know, I do this, but like you actually like live that out, you know, and I I really take that Thanks, to heart friend. and that's helped me a lot. It literally, we always joke around because Matt's going off to college, shout out UConn Huskies and me and my oh. mom always joke around and we're always like, you know, what's going to happen when Matt leaves the house? How are we going to have this patience to deal <laughs> with the circumstances because Matt's just got crazy patience, but what we're going to have to take some lessons from Matt. Matt's going to have to teach us. We have a little crash course. Yeah, we're going to have a crash course. Yeah. Hopefully it's not too expensive. No, I'll um, be free. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll, I'll be generous. I right, appreciate <laughs> it. Um, and as you guys know, me and my brother run the foundation, step-by-step -step foundation. We Ooh. found it 2019 collecting bottles and cans and giving back to various organizations in need in the community. And, you know, I wouldn't be able to do it without Matt. Matt, Says it 100%. And that's what I love about him. He's always like, you know, Mike, that might not be the best thing to do. Or he's like, you know what? That, that's good. You know, I, I always love, you know, all of his advice. And he's definitely got a lot of great ideas. And a lot of the people that come to the Bottle and Can Nights are because just they love Matt. And Matt's a great friend to him. You know, shout out, you know, Tanner. I'm going to forget people. Tanner, Vesa, um, Julie, Robert. Jacob. Jacob. Yeah, I can't forget Jacob. <laughs> It's hard to forget. And like, and like Vinny, yeah, there. Vinny, Big Cookie. So so many people. A lot of people. Yeah, yeah. Um, Bella. Okay, Jaden. And Jaden. And, okay, I I'm getting way off topic. Anyways, um, but step by step has been big for us, and just kind of talk about how that has helped you, like growing your face, just like serving, volunteering around the community, and just like what you really, you know, take from step by step into your everyday life with your faith. Oh yeah, of course. So um. Well, I don't know if you guys know the story, so I'll give a little bit of background how, like, mm. it really, really started because Michael didn't talk, that, talk on that so much. Yeah. So when I was getting my confirmation, what one of the crime was service hours. Yeah. And one of my good friends, they uh, knew someone that was running this food bank downtown uh, that we donate to a lot, actually, now. Yeah. And <laughs> we, I went there, and I had to, like, help the people get their food and sort it out and things like that. And I truly just saw, like, how, like, how truly, like, sad it was that most people don't have like the basic needs that mm -hmm. they they need and these people were lining up for hours like in the cold to get like things that are like past due rotten, yeah. and rotten and all those things like that and they 
and they never complained. They never did. They were just like truly grateful where the people were giving them. Mm -hmm. So the next week, and, and, and Michael was in Florida at this time. So, and then the next week me and my mom were like, let's try to do something, like get something together. So we, okay. so I think my, I could be wrong. My mom posted on something on Facebook. I reached out to all my friends in the community yeah. and then we got together a lot of non-perishable items and we brought it there the next week and the people were super happy and that helped out a lot of people. And then I remember around that time, Michael came back from Florida from Disney. And I took all the credit. <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. And, then, uh, and then he was like, he was like, he came with us because we did this a couple weeks in a row. Yeah. And then Michael was like, oh, this is like really cool. We should do something with this. And I was like, yeah, that would be like, we, we should. And then, and then before you know it, it went from like, oh, let's do a couple of bottles and cans to not being able to step around our house anymore. <laughs> for real. Um, having to build a shed just for bottles and cans. Um, Seriously. Before you know it, we're going to have to get a mansion just for bottles and cans. I don't know. But, um, Sell the house, yeah. Yeah. But, and then I have to give a shout out to this man. Like, because I, I'll be honest, I try to do, I try to do a lot, but I'm really busy in school and everything. This kid has school and everything. And he's... Like all hours of the day, he's driving all around the world, doing everything. I appreciate doing it. Doing all the, putting all the other stuff together for like board meetings, rather these, these spreadsheets, talking to all the different people, getting U-Hauls, doing all these things. <laughs> yeah. And you're truly what makes this thing run. I, I try to it. try to help out the best I can, but he's, he's insane. <laughs> and this man up here, whenever he's not in Massachusetts, he's going crazy as well, so... <laughs> Yeah, Mike so. is truly the heart and soul though. Oh, we you guys are that. too nice. Without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. So for real. I appreciate the kind Without you, it bro. definitely wouldn't be possible. So. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I love um your involvement with Step by Step. It's been so awesome to see how you know that one small like act of kindness to bring mm. that, you know, food donation to that pantry and mm. just seeing what God has done with that. So it just goes back to our whole philosophy with step by step, you know. Yeah. Take what it is that you have, um, be obedient to that, and mm. you know, give it to God and see the way that He's going to multiply it. And that's exactly what you know these two fine gentlemen have done. And it's just so awesome for me to be a part of it. I think you know, getting involved with service, um, you know, living out the corporal works of mercy that Christ mm. calls us to live out. You know, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, uh, visiting the, those that are in prison. Uh, it's really practical ways for us to mm. be Christ's hands and feet in the world, and yeah. also be His heart. Because um, there's a great verse that talks about, you know, what you do to the least of my brothers and sisters is what you do to me. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, Christ really calls us to do that. And it's just been awesome to be part of it. Yeah. Um, and for all those watching, just, you know, keep praying for Step by Step um, mm -hmm. in yeah. any ways that you want to get involved. Comment below, subscribe. Yeah. Uh, we'd love to just you know, have, welcome you and, um, you know, be part of this vision that God's really blessed us with. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, yeah, you go. I was about to say, <laughs> And we're, we're more than willing to uh, help uh, any volunteer. So if anyone yeah, yeah. needs anything, <laughs> more yourself. than welcome. Um, <laughs> for all different like bottle accounts and all different other things, it's step by step WTBY for Instagram. That's correct, right? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. For the most part. Because yeah. I don't want to give wrong information. <laughs> so if you ever want to reach out or if yeah. you know me or Michael, you could definitely always reach out to us, even Max. Yeah. And, or anyone that you know that's involved and they can more than well, because we're more than willing to... Uh, we definitely need help. So <laughs> anyone that's more than willing to help and help out the community, it's be more than appreciated. Yeah. More than appreciated. Yeah. Very more, very more, 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 more. <laughs> but no, I love you guys. And especially the thing with step-by-step, step, you know, the hardest part I feel like is getting people there to the step-by-step step places like the volunteer and the board meetings and stuff like that. But the thing is, once they get there, it really changes their lives because you really see these people, how much they, what they need, yeah. you know, you get to see their lives, how it, how it works, how nice they are, even when they have such little. And I just really feel like even with step-by-step, step, you know, we're not going to show up at your house and get mad at you. You know, we're not going to bill you or sue you if you don't show up to <laughs> like these volunteer things. But I genuinely believe like, it's not just for us, it's for you too. Cause yeah. I really feel like it's going to impact you and and um, the way that God's worked in my life through this foundation is incredible because just like going to these places that like, obviously, you know about the less fortunate 
we talk about the homeless, but like when you're really there in action, it's it's way different. Like it's hard to really put a pin in or, or really understand it. But you know, not just dropping off clothes, but like taking the time to sit down and talk to them, it would truly change your life. Yeah. So I, I really appreciate the kind words. It wouldn't be possible without God either. We gotta give God a shout out because he's he's been literally carrying this organization when I've screwed up and <laughs> when things have gotten crazy, literally God in us to get us a shed and you know, all these bottles and cans. People don't now i have no idea who in the world they are (laughs) i come home and there's like bottles outside the house and i'm like i have no idea who dropped it off it was probably an angel or something i don't know (laughs) but um no literally just a crazy story one time because i feel like the holy spirit's went in my heart to say this literally we were low on bottles and cans for the month and i was talking to my mom about it and i was like we're low on bottles and cans literally within the next like two or three hours we we get a call from someone in like Woodbury has like three bags of just cans. Like you can't make this stuff up. You know, when God's hands on it, you don't got to worry about how it's going to get done because it's going to get done. You just got to worry about doing it because God, God's going to make the steps clear for you. Um, so I just wanted to give a shout out to that. Thank you guys for the kind words and just kind of a closing thing, unless Max had anything else to say, but I love your Instagram bio Bible verse. And we talk about it a lot and it's kind of different than a lot of other Bible verses out Who, there. John, me? John, 29. Oh, yeah, it's not a normal John 316. Yeah, it's not a John 316. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not ripping on you. It's just my very different. Right, let's hear That's it. Oh, we're being hot right now. We're, this is uncut, uncensored. We're just, we're just throwing it out there. I'm sorry, Max. I didn't know that. Man, I'm, I'm changing sorry. it right after this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> but no, he was, he was just like, not a lot of people, like, this is not a usual Bible verse you put in your bio. It's very, um, but I love it. And I genuinely think like going back to like the high school, like aspect of Christian faith, I feel like this Bible verse really kind of speaks to kind of being a high school Christian and kind of walking it out maybe when you can't see it. So you just want to tell everyone kind of what it is and what the kind of verse means to you. Okay. I'll, I'll give a little context. Give a synopsis. So, yeah. it's John twenty twenty nine. <laughs> And this is after Jesus is resurrected. And when he went to all the apostles, except for Simon, that's important. <laughs> and then, like, he, he's... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, 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 just, I just woke up from a nap, by the way. So if I say anything <laughs> wrong, uncut, uncut, then that, that's, we're, that's we're my excuse. That <laughs> so, um, so, so basically, he went to everyone except for Thomas. And he was like, mm-hmm. like um, he basically came back and like told him he was back. And they're like, obviously, like, what their normal reaction be like they're shocked and all that stuff like, hey, but hey, thomas hey. wasn't there <laughs> and this is where my bible verse comes into play yeah. and then he comes back to see thomas and when he said like i'm not going to believe him until i put like my hands in his mm-hmm. side his hands and then the quote is when jesus like like finally comes back to show thomas yeah. he says the quote and i quote you have seen me so you have believed blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have believed mm. Mm. I don't even know what direct translation that one's from, <laughs> but I've heard like a multiple versions. Yeah, and that yeah, one yeah. always sounded the best to me. So <laughs> I would say that one after yeah, 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 yeah. But it's just it. It's obviously more literal back in the day. Like people that like, mm. like, like. Well, obviously, you could see now with the Holy Spirit when, like, when you physically like saw Jesus like as, after he resurrected before he went to heaven mm. and sent down the Holy Spirit. It's more literal then, but I take almost now into stance now that if you like directly see mm. i don't really know how to word this but it's on the spot uh, uncensored uh, <laughs> and all that stuff just if you directly directly see the things in your life and like you see how perfect it's going mm. like it, it will always just be easy for you like mm. if you go every single step of the way and then, like everything goes perfect like it's doesn't like it's, faith, it's, yeah. it doesn't really require faith yeah, yeah that's really and like good. no no re- n- not no disrespect to any of them but most people have the life that it's very like up and down is mm. the, like, like people like going through those periods of not like, like, like not saying you don't have faith, but it's like, it's getting tested and you don't really know what's like happening, mm. especially through high school. For me, it's been probably the hardest time mm-hmm. just cause all the different things got put into play, trying to manage it the best I can. But mm. it's kind of like when you're able to believe even in those times of, hardship and not mm. fully knowing what's going on those like those obviously if everything's going perfect you're on top of the world 24 7 it's always easy but when you're truly put in those hard situations mm. and really steered off to try your best to just stay on the track and not jump off the 
the train per se. Yeah. And just those are always the hardest moments, and that's why I just made up that analysis off right now. <laughs> that was good. It didn't sound that bad. Sounded good. It didn't sound that bad. It's real. Um, so. Yeah, no, it's good. That reminds me of um, this quote that I always go back to. I love that verse, by the way. I might have to change my John 316. <laughs> you're going you're to change it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, comment below what you'd like to see. My yeah, comment on. below what you want back. <laughs> There's all the but, Philippians one, too. Yeah, the Philippians. Uh, uh, Philippians 413. Philippians I can, 4, do, all I can do all things. things. But the, yeah, the Tim Tebow quote. Yeah, it's, it's a great quote. <laughs> it's very like, yeah, it's like that in John three sixteen or like, yeah, all the it's the people like like it's everyone. Yeah, it's know? everyone. Everyone knows those. No, 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 I'm not trying to riff on you. <laughs> no, it's, it's, a great, <laughs> it's a great, great quote. It's an amazing. Quote. It is the Bible in ver- in yeah. verse. It is the Bible. So. No, I yeah. appreciate that. But going back to your verse, the quote <laughs> that I was going to talk about, it's that cliche saying, "I'll see it when I believe it." Mm-hmm. But what your verse really speaks on is you believing and then seeing after yeah so flipping those two and that's yeah. something that i've noticed with my walk it's like oh i'll see it when i believe it it's like no with faith it's flipped it's, mm. you gotta believe and then you'll start to see yeah so that's just a quote i always well, go back good. to so yeah and with step by step i don't know if i said this on the podcast before forgive me if i have <laughs> um but this kind of goes back to kind of acting before you kind of see the whole picture, before you see how everything's going to work out, you're going to ask to step out in faith when you see everything. Um, and the one thing is when we were doing Christmas, we had like, I think $3,000 in the bank for step-by-step. Like we're, we're hot, humble, open, and transparent. I'll tell you how much money we have. Like we're not trying to hide our finances, anything. We'll tell you where we give, how much money we give and all that stuff. And basically I really felt like the Lord's putting in my heart to spend like $2,500 on these particular Christmas things. We did a bunch of things with departments and children's and families. We got Christmas gifts for um, kids who couldn't afford them. And then we also um, got $1,000 gift cards, um, for who else did we get? We got for DCF, and then we also did stuff for, I don't know, some was, like, well, that was our on time to coach drive, but that was something different. Yeah, yeah. But basically, we spent $2,500, $1,000 in gift cards, and $1,500, oh, Greater Waterbury Interfaith Ministries, we did stuff with them too. But, oh. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, so I, I was like, okay, we don't have a lot of money in the bank, but I really felt like the Lord was putting on my heart to really act out in yeah. faith and say, you know what, God, even though I don't see it right now, I'm still going to have faith that you're going to provide yeah. all the finances and everything like that. And literally we spent the $2,500. We got that back. Really and quick. we got it back within a week and a half. Like I swear, I got a phone call from a grant company that I had, I had no idea how they got in contact. They got in contact with Rock of Ages. The people called these people. I didn't even know what the organization was. They called us up. It was like, we want to give you a $1,500 grant. And and I was like in awe. And then the $1,000 in gift cards came from came from a family, the Faw family, shout out Faw family. And shout then they out. gave us $1,000 worth of gift cards. Yeah, awesome. And all of that came back. And just the Lord is putting on my heart, like, don't ever put limits on me. Yeah. Like, like walk out in faith and God will provide. But if we're just going to wait and just sit yeah. here for God to provide, then he's going to be like, then it's not faith because then it's just, actuality like it's just reality you're just gonna go yeah so yeah it's that point you believe and then you'll start to see and, Amen. and you had belief and faith in god even though it was scary and it, it required faith on your mm. part to go out and you know take that step absolutely um and it is hard it is challenging but it's awesome when we do take that step of faith hence the podcast yes yeah, so, seriously and we'll really start to see god in it amen so, Oh yeah, and just for clarification, when you said Rock of Ages, that that's also the same as that food bank that I was talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to make that uh, people are like, connection. What, what just is Rock case, of Ages? Just I'm in confused. case they didn't know. Yeah, <laughs> but um, just one more point before yeah, we finish. Absolutely. One thing I've always like realized in my faith journey that always helped me keep pushing because hmm. I feel like my peak peak of like fully believing, like or like where I was fully like like the best at the best Mm -hmm. point, I feel like it was probably around like seventh ish grade, like six or seventh. And I always just remember how, like how happy I was no matter what and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And like, I, if someone's never like fully felt that Mm -hmm. I could promise you right once, right. When you feel that feeling, you're always going to want to just keep pushing to try to get back to that point and just try Mm -hmm. to stay there as much as possible. Cause when you're, when you're truly like, when you when you finally feel that you never want to feel anything else, yeah. and you're always just on top of the world no matter what, mm. and no. then just always you never worry about anything, and yeah. everything is just obviously so it could be everything would be going horrible, but 
Yeah. It's all just about your mindset and how you go through it. So good. No, yeah. So good. And it kind of goes back to um, when we and Max were talking about and everyone, like, once people encounter Jesus, they'll never be the same. Yeah. Like, like once you really feel that peace and you really feel God working through you, you're going to always get to that point because the world can't give you what God can provide for you. And then once you really encounter who Christ is and you invited him into your life and you have a relationship with him, nothing in the world, no other relationships, no amount of money and no amount of those things are going to be able to give you what God's going to be able to give you that love, that like unconditional, like undeniable, like reckless love that he gives us Yeah. that literally like he paid it all when we were still sinners yet Christ died for us. Yeah. You know? So I love what Matt said. Like you're always just trying to get back to that point, trying to just, just really encounter Christ for yourself in every situation and really try to just live that life yeah. out. Amen. So, dude, this was an incredible podcast, Matt. You killed it. You could yeah, have had me yeah. on earlier. <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, telling I'm sorry, you, but we, we wanted to see if you were really for real step of faith, if you guys were real fans, because this is a good podcast. So if you guys made it this long, you already know that um, we just loved having you on. Matt Keating always had great you. stuff to say. Wouldn't be the person I am today without him. Literally, Same. the areas where I'm not as great at, Matt's incredible at. Thank um, you. One of the smartest kids that I've ever known. He teaches me things every day that through like science, I literally, he kicks my butt in jeopardy every night, which kind of stinks. But you know what? It happens. It happens. <laughs> so <laughs> God's working on that. God's working on that. <laughs> um, you beat me sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. What, like once every week, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> still once. Yeah, still once, you know. But um, man. Anything else you want to say before we kind of wrap it up? That was kind of my closing. Yeah, that was that was <laughs> closing. Back. I can't think of anything else. Oh man, I'm 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 good. Thank good. you guys for tuning in. My name is Mike. My name is Matt. And I'm Max. And this is the Step of Faith podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in. God bless. Ooh, ooh. Thank you.